Okay, so we will open a finance committee with all members present at uh, 602. Okay, so our first resolution this evening is 22R69, a resolution approving change orders to the Cavanaugh Building Corporation for the Sisler Field Tennis and Ball Courts Project and declaring an emergency. And this is for a total of $33,558.38. We have uh, uh, some asphalt grindings that were uh, put in, added riprap, undercuts, and a change in the fencing height. Uh, Mr. Powell, you have a couple questions about this? I, I do. I had some emails we had going circulating back and forth. Thanks for responding to them. Uh, first, first question is this work is done, is that correct? It is. Okay. So that leads to with a change order. Change order is a proposal for work to be done. And with that being said, this work is already done. I know we had some conversation about is this a then and now or is this just an amendment to the contract? Uh, where this become, I believe this becomes a then and now is because the work's already, we're already liable for that money. So, I mean, if we don't pass this, the city's still obligated to pay this money. Is that correct? We can't pay it until you pass it. But, but the city still owes the money, though. I, yeah. I spoke to the auditor's office, who are the ones that make the final decision on that, and I gave her the specifics. And she said, basically, since the since council has not approved them, we, are, we don't have an obligation yet to pay that. Whether it's done or not, we don't have an obligation because you guys haven't approved that work. It's not to say that we want to make them, you know, we're not going to pay. It's just that that's why it's not a then and now. It's a approval of the change orders. And then the time starts running once you make that approval. And that's what they told me, and they're the ones that would come in and say if this was right or wrong. Okay, so, it, so I mean, if Kavanaugh were to present us with an invoice because this work's done. I mean, they they have, have, right? Um, not a final one, no. Oh, I see, okay. So, yeah, so I mean, the, the work you really get to catch is if you don't have, if you get an invoice and don't have a purchase order in place, the dates don't match, and that's where the auditors would catch that. But in a case like this, we haven't officially signed the the uh, change order. But by giving them the verbal okay to proceed with the work, that's the same as signing the, the change order. That's entering into that contract because you gave them in good faith the permission to proceed with that. So technically, we, we have entered into this, this change order. I, uh, I reached out to a, a guy that I know that he actually is the former finance director for the city of Arlington. Asked him about this, he, he agreed that this should be a then and now. And I'm not just resting everything on that, but they had the same problem in Barberton. And how he made that that change was anytime this would happen, he made whoever gave that authorization, they're going to be responsible for that personally. And he said after that, that, that quick. Uh, I talked with, with our finance director, who also sits on the board for Rita, and he once again said, Yeah, no, that this is a then. Now, the reason it's brought, I, I caught this because. I have to deal with this at work on a regular basis. Uh, I reached out to the Ohio Municipal League, talked to them a little bit. Uh, the woman I talked to on the phone agreed that you know, no, you, you have to go through this process. You can't just arbitrarily you know, approve this. And uh, they, they directed me to talk to a guy, named, uh, Mr. Hunt, who gives the actual official legal opinion. Uh, he is in a seminar this week, but he's going to reach out to me next week. So then I talked to the, the state auditor. I talked to. Uh, is Kim Eckert, not the local Kim Eckert, but the one in Columbus who is the finance director for the auditor of the state. And she said the same thing. Now, if, and she goes, her, her exact words were, if I was dealing with something on the state level, I could not do that. So that's, and then, so she has other people going to be reaching out to me. I don't know if I want to hear from tomorrow or the next day or whatever. So I, mean, I can get back to you on that with whatever they say. Or I mean, if you'd like to forward me the information from whoever you're, I just, I'd feel better knowing it if I, just I had that conversation to put me in better reasons. Uh, moving forward on this tonight, I mean, I'm, I'm not asking for time on it. I just know that what I know, I, I can't vote yes for it, but I'm, I'm assuming, I'm not saying we don't pay them, and I, I'm assuming it will still pass, but just 
in my position, I can't vote yes on this with the a clear conscience. I appreciate the, the insight, and uh, um, the, the best I can say is, well, yeah, first of all, I think going forward, one of the things that was discussed and was suggested that what you know how we do things right. maybe a little bit better in the future, we add contingencies to the contract, etc. As these things come up in the course of uh, of construction, as many of you are aware, it's like now or never. Right. Well, okay, I, 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 so go ahead. I, I agree with that. I'm not suggesting there's any malice. Oh no, I appreciate it. You know, Brian, they did a great job managing the project. The courts look great. I understand what the, the change. It, it was a great improvement to it. it. It's just it's the technicality of. And it, yeah, and it may well be the you know the, the absence of the contingency that caused in the bid because there really isn't another way at that point in time to do it. You know, but they're in the middle of construction. We got to have an answer today. We don't have time to do a resolution. Bring it to council. So I, I think going forward. So two things. I mean, going forward, I think we can do better. Okay, in terms of the legitimacy of, of what we have. Uh, I'm satisfied with the input, you know, the response that Susan got from the auditor's office, that, uh, that they're satisfied with this approach as it relates to this transaction. So I just tell that to the rest of the council in terms of any comfort level you might have, that I'm representing to you that the auditor's office has represented to us that they've been advised of the situation uh, and they have no objection to proceeding in this fashion to get these bills paid. So. I think it's a you know a learning moment. I think it's something that we can do you know do better in the future. I respect you know of course any way you choose to vote on it, Mr. Powell. But uh, um, so I, I, that's as good as I can tell you. I, I'd just like to say that with a lack of complete understanding of this these processes, um, you know we have to defer to the finance director. So if she's got the confidence that this is the way we have to do it, that's. That's the position we're in. I, I don't. I mean, the changes were obviously done. We saw them. Uh, we agreed with Brian. They make sense. It, it looks good. Um, we don't have to mow things that by the original design. We were going to have to mow awkward things. So that's why rock was put in in place of uh, uh, in place of grass. So. Uh, so I, okay. Anyone else? Will this be paid out of the park fund or the general fund? General fund. It's part of the, you know, yeah, it'll be out of the general fund. Okay. That's just and we can, you know, certainly increase the, you know, the amount that ultimately is refunded, for lack of a better term, from parks back to general fund. And, and just, just a question, curiosity type thing. Since these uh, events happen on four sectors, four separate things happen on four separate dates, each of them below $10,000, could you just uh, approve them on your own with each point yes. each point and that's what I did council. Yes, that's what I did. When they came to me, I had to sign off on them. So okay. I did. So do we really need to do this? Um, well we still need yeah because they're individual things. Because uh, it was originally a bid. So any any uh, change from the bid amount okay. would need that's your approval. Yeah. Okay. That's why Kevin was talking about Putting in a contingency that right, there's X right. amount of dollars that you right. would do it, but without that, right. the change okay. order is. Any uh, questions? Uh, are you comfortable waiting to three on this? Super good, Cooper. We'll move on to our uh, second readings okay. and uh, Mr. Daniels. Yep. So you don't have to listen to Jim all night. Um, our second reading is the uh, the the. Uh, Appropriations. Um, 22R62 was presented to the Finance Committee. Uh, it's a resolution approving and adopting the 2023 annual operating appropriations budget for the general fund and all other funds for the city of New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. Um, we have a lot of data, a lot of stuff to go through. Um, I think our plan is to go to three readings on this because we have the time and there's, there's a lot to process. Um, so no concerns that I have seen or heard other than there's just a lot to go through. So. I have a couple comments on this. Uh, you know, once again, I, I thought the process went very well. We got great feedback from the department heads. I think they actually appreciate us being which what was great. Uh, one of the things I think that came to light during this was the the amount of funding that service has for the roads and stuff, and it seemed kind of thin in some areas. 
And I know we talked about some, some ways to kind of offset that. I don't know if the finance committee or council would like to have some additional conversations at some point in time. Uh, one of the things I think was the, the vehicles. There are some, you know, there's a certain number of vehicles I need, but the funding really wasn't there for it. And there's not, like we have in the police or fire, we've got direct funnels of money going into them. You know, it's, they're essentially, a lot of it comes from the general fund. So, I mean, if you guys like to have some conversation on it, it doesn't have to be tonight, but we can set that up for some future discussion. I know one of the things was a, uh, another follow up with some discussion we had. Okay. I think a procedure that might not, I mean, this is, this is a, a new thought, um, would be for the department head when there is some constraints, which everybody was pretty simple until we got the service. When there are some constraints, um, that maybe there'd be a request to have a meeting with the finance committee. Um, you know, we were in the budget process. Um, I don't know if that's a, that makes sense for us or, you know, or, or to have a meeting with council that, that the service department could sit down and explain and you explain you're involved with, you know, you and Susan are involved with it on a more intimate basis than, than we are obviously. Um, so that, because some of them are big purchases so that maybe we make sure we're all on the same page. And, I, I think that'd be something for the finance committee to uh, the service department or any department if there's a situation like that, meet with the finance committee and uh, present their case and, and then at that point uh, we can proceed with uh, discuss with the mayor and finance director or finance director to be involved in those meetings also uh, instead of having all of council yeah. uh, in there just you know get a, uh, an idea of what they would like to accomplish and then figure out a way to do it and then be able to present it to council for a decision. So that might be something for sure. Brian to set up during the next Eight to ten months to start talking about next year. I don't think we're. I don't. I, I don't think we're set to make any changes to this because actually, because I don't think the equipment's available. Even if we did right, so, right. well, I would like to. I would like to start the process sooner. Um, okay. You know, even that we can even start talking about. Well, is there anything we can do for next year? Uh, even though the the budget appropriations are already set, do we need? Can we wait? Should we wait? Or do we need or should not we to start? Wait? Should and, we start talking now so right. that we can you right? Know. So that if, if an opportunity presents itself this year, we don't miss it because we're already looking for those opportunities and uh, and make adjustments through through the appropriations uh, throughout the year if we need to if, if an opportunity presents itself. So it I'd be comfortable with having that meeting quickly. With equipment being so difficult to find right now, which you pointed out, you could start looking now mm -hmm. to see because you might look upon something that you would need and might be able to purchase it. If we gave Brian more of a long term, mm -hmm. what our thought process mm -hmm. is of long term, I, I, I think that's a good idea. I think, uh, and actually see what he needs, and that way you can right. start looking for it because used equipment is really valuable oh, right yeah. now. Well, and if we wanted to try to have that meeting before the third reading of this. Is that what you're suggesting, Jim? Yeah, I'm available next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason I brought this up, I didn't bring it up, I wasn't intended for all account, but at least to bring it up, so I know we've talked about it, I right. haven't really heard it brought up in, in a <laughs> Thanks, <formal> you. form. <laughs> but, and, and this is kind of falls in with trying to keep the level of service up too, because you know, we're doing a lot of paving and stuff like right. that. Exactly. So it's the give and take, you know, to keep the level of service up, we might need to give a little bit more of the service part. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be more of a long term, and, and I'm not discouraging you from meeting as soon as you want to meet. Um, and I think, as you're aware, it, it, it's not a situation where where the service department says we got to have this, and Adam and say no, you can't. You know, it, it's a question of I think what's what's going to the council's going to help determine is you know what do we want to do from the general fund, right? You know, for these types of purchases, and what's the most efficient, effective way to do it. And, um, you know, is it purchase, is it lease, you know, you know. I, I didn't hear what you just said. <laughs> but you said a word now, but just not familiar. Which one? <laughs> oh, I hear you. Yeah. Well, anyway, so, yeah. So, I mean, I think that that's, you know, I think I, and, and with the availability of, of vehicles, uh, as you say, you want to get on the line as soon as you can, but. Uh, well, it's really expensive right now. Know. It's difficult to find. It's it dollars yeah. Used equipment is fabulous, but it is. Very difficult to find. But it's going to be that kind of discussion, I think, of what you know, what do we want to do out of general fund, 
for, and then there's a history for having done these. So the last two big plow trucks came out of general fund. Um, and so it, it's not that it hasn't been done. Well, we did discuss this when we were in, when we were having these meetings because um, he presented the equipment that he would he would like to buy, and there was only specific equipment that that might be readily available. Yeah, right. was a, and the dump truck was not one of them. And so we discussed then let's get the ones that we know that we can purchase and stay use that as your you know foundation of your budget, and then if a dump truck becomes available. Then we will look, you know, to the general fund to finance that. If you remember, we discussed that in detail. So, so we did try to, you know, flesh that out at least so that he would be covered. But he wasn't even sure if there would be one available. And we said, well, if we don't know, then why we shouldn't set this, you know, keep you from getting those other things that you feel that you need that are available. I don't think this discussion has to do with there being a problem. I right. think has right. to do with maybe an opportunity right. for us to be more involved in the longer right. term and in the, in the bigger picture, right. specifically to the service department in this case. So, right. Right. Well, right. so good discussion. I, I just wanted that the rest of council to know what the discussion yes, was. Yes, we so. did. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, anything else on the button? No. So we're going to wait for time on that. Okay. Um, Resolution 22R64 was assigned to the Finance Committee also. It's a resolution granting a wage increase for the new Franklin Finance Director and declaring this an emergency. Um, we had some discussions recently about this, and I think the, we're going to ask for one more reading on this. Uh, if my understanding is correct to uh, discuss a little further. Okay. Were, we, were we going to have some an executive session to sure. wrap up this? Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion or comments on that? Hearing none, uh, we'll go back to Mr. Collins. Thank you. Resolution uh, for a second reading is 22R68, resolution granting wage increases for certain full-time and part-time non-union job classifications and declaring an emergency. And this is something that, that we do um, uh, every year, and uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, 22 R 66 amended. It's, it's been amended, uh, where it's added with the exception of the finance director and the event resolution 22 R 64 is approved. Um, so, is for a two and a half percent wage increase, which is basically what the unions are are uh, getting. Um, I've stated in the past every year, and I'll continue to, to state my objection to this. I, I am not opposed to the staff getting raises. Um, uh, it's, it's not a question of whether they deserve it or not. Uh, it, well, I guess kind of it is. <laughs> uh, but I'm not opposed to them getting the raises. I'm opposed to just across the board raises. Uh, we've, we've talked for a number of years of having a um, uh, evaluation process. Uh, where employees are giving true evaluations and raises based on those evaluations, based on their merit. Uh, I, I, one of the issues I have with, with just across the board raise is if you have employee A that comes in and, and works hard and, and puts a lot of effort into it and does whatever's asked and you know, just boom, 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 and you know, one of the best employees you have, they're going to get the same raise as someone that just shows up and barely gets, gets through the day, and barely gets things done. And, and I, I think that that's, uh, I, I just, to me, that's just not right. And so um, when we take this to vote, I will be voting no on it. I fully expect it to pass, but uh, I, I will be voting no on it because of the process, not because of my uh, desire for employees not to get races. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I will vote for it because there's already somebody voting no. <laughs> um, because I, I think we all agree this should pass, but um, the concept of setting goals, achieving those goals, using that as a measure of to, to job performance, I think is, is critically important to everyone's everyday life. In fact, I think it's also important to everyone's happiness with their own job. Um, having that type of an evaluation to, to, to know that you're doing a good job most people who are not doing a good job know they're not doing a good job, but the people who are doing a good job 
Any other comments, questions? We'll ask the way the third reading on this and proceed with the vote tonight. Okay. And hey, listen, let's go now rather than later. I'm, I'm after the fact. I, I just I do want to, I respect that those this thing you know and every every year I do. And I would say two things. You know, one is, and this isn't a stretch, and it, it, you know that. Um, that the two and a half, the, 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 the wage increase is reflective of the fact that based on the previous year's evaluations, the people that are affected here got good evaluations and are, and are doing a good job. Uh, that's easy to say, but we believe that. Um, and, and, we, and I get the, the flat number is, you know, potential for inequity there. Um, we've done some staggered numbers as recently as last year. You know, so it hasn't always been just the two and a half percent, but it just seemed that based on some of the you know, some of the uh, progress we made in raising the comparables uh, over the last couple of years, that this seemed to be a good year just to go along with uh, the two and a half. And it, it's it, as you know that we also have the unions who agreed to that two and a half percent too. And so it's tricky business. I'm still open to it. We've done some different things in the past, and uh, if there's you know strong consensus when we get into next year of individual raises. I've talked to staff about it. Now, they're not telling me they're about it. Okay. I get that. I get that. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe we can think about, you know, going in a different direction. And, and uh, I mean, I think there's pros and cons to that. And, and I, I'll tell you, what I haven't done is done any research into that for the coming year to see what the HR specialists say in, in small offices. If you have a different raise for desk A versus desk B, and they both seem to be getting Good job performances. Is that a good thing? Is it, is it, you know, does it, you know, encourage competition or does it create dissension? You know, I'm not sure the answer to that. But, uh, anyway, that's my thoughts on it. All right. I guess I'm going to comment now. Uh oh. Oh, oh go ahead, Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Dave. Paul, what I think I'm hearing you say is that you feel everybody in your office is really doing a good job. You don't have any complaints. True. So you feel everybody deserves this raise. I do. That's what I'm hearing you say. That's what I'm saying. And you do have a small staff. Yeah. And you probably don't, knowing the ladies that work with you, you don't have any of So no. what you're actually saying is, in your opinion, these were merit-based. Because each one of those people, if you interviewed them and had to say how well they were doing, you would say, they are doing a good job for me. Am correct. I correct? I agree. That's what I heard. Thank you. So I'm kind of going on the same line. Jim made a comment of the person that comes in and does a good job, then the other person okay. just comes in and shows up. I'm not sure we have anybody just comes in and shows up. So I, 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 I mean, you make that you make that point, I, but I you do it with you're talking about the race for our staff, right? And you make that comment. So that's you're still dry. I understand that in a big picture, but when we're talking about our staff here, our administration, and our people, and you say you got people come in eager, and then you got some people just show up. We were having a discussion about this legislation, so that kind of sounds like we do have a few people that just show up. Okay, well, I certainly. I mean, I know you didn't mean that, but if you right. sit back and look at it, then you got to agree that we're talking about this, not just a big picture of a big corporation. So I, I was trying not to say anything, and I started to think I have to say something. We don't have anybody that yeah, shows up there. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and gets gets a two and a half percent raise. Everybody works hard. I, I'm sure everybody does, and it wasn't a reflection on any individual I started person. To it that way, so I want to know who that person was. No, 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 was not uh -huh. any individual person. We haven't had a raise. I haven't had a raise, I haven't had a raise in 18 years, so. Well, that's, yeah. that's a reflection on your job. Yeah. However, <laughs> I've got plenty. I got plenty in my brain. Yeah. Very based, unfortunately, David. What's that's that? what I was understanding too, from what Paul was saying. Yeah, I mean, he's saying that everybody was doing a good job in his opinion. And he's the person we rely upon to say, hey, you need to get this done or you don't. Well, he's the one that does our job performance mm -hmm. reviews. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I, I apologize to the world. Uh, <laughs> we have the third reading on this, but, but I still stand by my, my uh, comments. Yeah, we got people just show up, so that's good. You can have your opinion. You know, David, David I, and I, I don't want to argue at this point, but, but again, my point was not to, to talk about anybody specifically. I wasn't suggesting that we have anybody within the department. I was just saying that as an example of how performance evaluations could be used or how a flat uh, increase could be shown as uh, not a good thing. 
I certainly wasn't talking about any individual that works for the city of New Franklin uh, specifically. It was just a general comment in general, completely, you know, non-specific. Right? You're talking about management practice. Yeah. Yes. Hey, right. Jim, I'm going to say to you, I was not offended by it, and I didn't take it. I'm not offended. I knew exactly right. what you were saying. I, didn't want, I want to make sure that nobody out there right, in, in the world was offended. Good luck with that one. Okay, uh, thank you. So we'll ask to wait the third reading on this. Yes, and I would note that I uh, I put this amended together and I wrote 22R66. This is actually 22R68. Yes. So if you can scratch out the 66 on what's in front of you. It was introduced as 22R68 last, last uh, so that's my mistake. And you can see that in your minutes. And it's on the agenda as 22R68. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I marked it wrong on paper. Okay, we will close, if I may, the Finance Committee meeting at 627. Like to Susan, if we can, before you do that, uh, I, I want, I'd like to excuse Susan um, from the uh, full meeting. I wanted her to hear for these discussions, but uh, she has something pretty special going on in her life that she'd like to be a part of, so I'm have her explain that. Yes, as I, I know some of you know that my, um, well, today's my mother's 96th birthday. My mother is also um, in the last stages of Alzheimer's. So, don't know how many more they'll be. But um, I have to say that my, my youngest daughter has given up most of her life. Um, she's an SCNA to stay home with her grandmother. And so, she and I spend most of our days feeding, changing, because she's bedridden. So, I just like to at least have a little cake with her and um, wish her a happy birthday and spend a little bit of time with her this evening. So, I'm sorry, but no it's kind of important. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. I think that's a great program. All right. God bless you. And I'm very with you as well as you know. Thanks. Thanks, Jean. And I call the order the um, November 16th, 2022, City Council meeting, and the time is 6.29. Everybody will see you in the head. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Susan, can you make a motion to approve the minutes from the November 2nd? Second. Do you have a first and a second coming to do a roll call? Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. I'd like to make a motion to approve the financials for October 2022 subject to audit. Second. We have a first and a second coming to do a roll call. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. We have uh, public comment now. Does anyone have anything they would like to comment on? All right, tell us your name and your address. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, this is more of a, a PSA public service. Right. 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 Harry Patterson, resident of New Frank. Uh, 6118. Right. This is going to be more of a public service announcement. Uh, my wife and I run an organization here in the city of New Franklin and have for the last two years. It's a nonprofit of 501c3. And what we do is we go into encampments here in Summit County, right here in our own community too. Uh, and we take provisions to people that do not have food, do not have clothing, and some do not even have shelter. I took some things to a young lady last week, 19 years old, sleeping in an empty lot on College Street with absolutely nothing. Now it's outside of New Frank, but it's still in our community. 
eight and a half months pregnant. Luckily, we were able to get her into housing that very night. You know, uh, Kevin has worked with us, Andy and his wife, always. So, uh, the name of the organization is Friends Intense. The acronym is FIT. You know, we have been doing this since October, right here in New Franklin. If you think we don't have homeless people here, we do. Not just any breaks, <laughs> but we, I mean, we have people that are living in the woods that you never see. You know, and we, we do what we can. We're not trying to, to solve homelessness here in our community. It's a problem all over. I've watched the numbers in the last two years go from serving 1,000 people to well over 4,000 now on any given time. Uh, with the pandemic ending, ending and the moratorium on evictions ending, lots of people are in, are in, in distress. So I just wanted to come here tonight to let you guys know that we are here. We're in New Franklin. Um, we've been doing this for a couple of years now. Uh, Andy is, has, and Nikki have been more than gracious when they had the restaurant and helping us. Kevin, can't thank you enough. So I would just like to thank you guys for allowing us to do this here. Uh, we are looking for a building in New Franklin. We have one in Barberton right now, the old St. Jude's uh, Catholic Church where the shrine was. Uh, they, they let us take over that building to be able to house stuff until we can get, you know, a more appropriate, bigger place. So, Madam President, thank you for allowing me to speak. Council, I thank you. That, uh, Mayor Paul Howard, thank you. Would you give us your phone number? Or I actually have business cards for and, all of us. Uh, here, uh, what would love to happen? Yeah. You mentioned provisions. Could you elaborate on the stuff that people can either donate or I mean, the stuff that you're taking out these people? I know you mentioned yeah. you're taking out heating fuels and heating sources. Yes. I mean, yeah, if you can just talk to yeah, yeah. stuff that people could, uh, how they can get in touch with you, where they can provide you, and, and ways they can help. The best way to contact us is through our Facebook page. If you just put in Friends Intent, you can get right to the Facebook page. I get you to me and my wife and uh, Megan, right? She, also was one of the founders who started this two years ago. Most of the provisions that we look for are, especially this time of year, heating sources, uh, donations for propane tanks, empty <coughs> propane tanks are a big thing. You know, if you have an empty one, you don't know what to do with it, you can't recycle it, give me a call. I'll come and get it, because we get those filled. We have a contract with uh, Gem and Sons over in Akron, so that some of the homeless people over there can just go there, and then they call us, and they say, you know, hey, this person, we're like, yeah, go ahead and fill it. They put it on our account. Uh, blankets, tents, any camping. Because basically, a lot of these people are they're camping year round. That's what they're doing. They're living in tents and they're camping year round. So if you got camping here, you don't know what you're doing with it, you're not camping no more, you tried it, you didn't like it, you mean what? Um, non perishable foods is a big thing. A lot of these people, they can't get public assistance because they have to have an address. So, and we try to get them in touch with other organizations. CSS <coughs> over in Akron is a real good organization. They help them set up PO boxes right there in their facility. But if they're staying out here, if they're in Jackson, they're over in Green, it's hard for them to get all the way over to CSS to be able to you know, solidify any of that, you know, use those resources. So yeah, clothing, unfortunately, if I get to my time, then no, no, you're uh, fine. You're clothing, fine. unfortunately, they wear clothing until they can't wear it because they have no way to wash it. So you wear it and they can't carry a lot of stuff around with them. We go through more blue jeans and, and t-shirts than you could ever have. We take them out. My wife will load a whole trailer for them. And we'll get rid of them the next week. We'll take another whole trailer. And we go in, we take a hot meal at least a couple of times a month. We take, uh, you know, sustainable foods. Every time we go out, we take clothes pretty much every time we go out. This time of year, heavy coats, hats, gloves, hand warmers, foot warmers, sternos. Uh, a lot of these people are MacGyver. They can figure out a way to heat a whole tent with a couple tea light candles. You'd be surprised, you know, when you get this like this out, then you know. Kevin, again, I think you for asking me. Do you have your cards for us? Yeah, I have cards for all of them if you'd like. Okay, we'll move on. 
Thank you. And I'm sure you take donations too. And on your card, does it have a phone number for people? That yes, actually it, it does. I hope so, Do you mind if I read that again when I do the business? Or it's edgy. May I read it again and, and read your number? Would that be okay? Yes, definitely. I see you've got a hat here. Thank you. <laughs> you took that off because there's a lady here. I understand. You might knock about the I know. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I didn't want Miss Jones to cut me off after a couple of seconds. Judy, please. Thank you. Oh, I thank you. We appreciate it very much. Yes, very, thank you. Very, very worthy cause. Does anyone else have anything on? Hey, Judy. Here? Hey. All right. Um, this gentleman's a little bit hard to follow, but um, <laughs> I did have a question with regards to the transport and the additional money. Um, specifically, the fence. Why did that need to be changed? Why wasn't that, I guess, decided from the beginning? Um, it had to do with the height, height yeah. right? And and it just was missed, I guess, by the in, in the planning. But once there was a look at, you know, once the court was there and it was time to put the fence in, the concern was that the balls were not going to stay within the court. Uh, so I'm really glad they caught that, quite frankly, mm -hmm. because we were able to correct it during construction as opposed to after a few weeks of people, you know, ruining each other's games. So that's what happened with the fence. And I might be wrong, Sharon, but some of the changes looked to me like they were caught. It was just because it wasn't listed correctly or there was something they could do to make it better was my impression and I yeah. think I got that from Jack. Didn't mm -hmm. you say something about the mowing honey? Yeah, yeah, there was there was there was some long term efficiencies that were thought about. I mean the fence was clearly an oversight, but the, the asphalt grinding were in place of grass and the what what do you call the other rock? Rip rack on rip the rack. back of the between the, the two sets of tennis courts is a slope. So they would have had to continually mow that which pushed the staff at risk and there's some other issues there. So they basically Put in foot fabric and then the larger rip wrap stone, which now it's a non maintenance issue. I just got that impression that some of those were just, you know, how when you're you know, making a cake, you've got to have all the ingredients. And these, I think they just overlooked a couple of things and they added them in, which normally happens. Am I correct, Sean? Well, if we built pickleball courts all the time, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we probably wouldn't make them. Next time, no, yeah. no, but no. Mid cut, mid cut on rollers, and this make it around. So they, they would have had to go off of what was spec in the front. I think that's what was missed was in the front. Kavanaugh's been in business of moving dirt and doing things for a long, long time. They're actually doing the work at the high school now. They're doing the dirt work and stuff. Yeah, I think each project presents a different challenge. And for instance, here we have we got the split level on the courts because of the topography. So we don't have the six courts in a flat line. We have you know the upper tier and the lower tier, and that's not. Yeah, I don't know what standard is, but that's a little bit unusual. So that's when some of these, particularly the rip rap and all that came up. And as I understand, Captain also one that suggested some of these changes. Hey, you may want to think about this. You know, even though the plans call for grass, you may not want to do that and you know, caught it for us and made some suggestions. So they, they were quite helpful. We have a young lady that's taken the interest in attending council meetings. Or if she'd like to say anything. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, I actually did have a question. Uh, you need your name. You have to say your name and your address. Um, my name is Amy Wilson, and I'm 52 Wells Avenue, Um, Are there any like transportable generators at the fire station for medical needs if the power to go off? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Paul, would you know? Uh, I do not know the answer to that. Um, I can find out. I, I, just, I don't know. That would be something that could be Yeah, that's a good thought. It is a very good thought. Don't we'll take the one. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I can I was going to say, if you, if you come up after the meeting and give us your number, we'll find the answer and call you and let you know. I would appreciate that. Thank you. And if their ambulances are similar to what I'm familiar with, they, they do have generation on it, typically an inverter. 
where they can get smaller sources of AC power off of them. In, a, in an ambulance, you're saying? Right, so you're here? I've seen where the radios go down, they pull the ambulance up and it plugs the radio oh. systems into the... I think, I think what she oh, might be yeah. talking about is, yeah, if you got to, you know, we have a storm here and power goes out for yeah. an extended period of time when the fire department is able to go out to someone's house and provide them with an emergency generator, um, you know, yeah, yeah, an oxygen, oxygen machine, machine yeah. or something like that. That could get a little tricky. Yeah. It could be complicated, but it's an interesting concept. Oh, yeah, yeah. To, to yeah. I can give you some spot. No, no, you're right. David, I'm sorry. But, but I just think, doesn't they, haven't we pumped the basement out or two? So, oh, sure. So we, that's one of the things. They have some portable pumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm sure. I don't know about generators. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Either. That was a little off awesome. but that was, you know. Yeah, that, that question was stemmed from the last meeting with the generator for the, for the firehouse, I believe it was. Yeah. And her father, or her grandfather, is on oxygen. So the concern was uh -huh. that the electric went out, uh -huh. would there be a way Possibly provide him with a power source in order to run that that oxygen. Could could prevent him from having to go to the hospital. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, as Kevin said, the ambulance would be the first line mm -hmm. on that. But then the longer term, we would have to really investigate. And a lot of people are putting generators in, mm -hmm. and that is some of the reason, medical reasons for mm -hmm. the people that are are having difficulty. And without oxygen, oh, so difficult for yeah. But we will find out for you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments? And Kelly, if you can go to our first reading, resolution number 22R69. A resolution approving change orders to the Cavanaugh Building Corporation for the Sisler Field Tennis Pickleball Courts Project and declaring an emergency. This resolution is assigned to the Finance Committee. We move to waive the three readings on resolution 22R69. Second. You have the first and a second, Kelly? Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. We move to adopt resolution 22R69. Second. You have first and second, Kelly? Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? No. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Motion passes 6 1. Uh, we have a second reading resolution number 22 R62. A resolution approving and adopting the 2023 annual operating appropriation budget for the general fund and all other funds for the city of New Franklin and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This resolution was assigned to the Finance Committee and we're asking for time. Time is requested for time to be granted. Resolution number 22R64. As amended, a resolution granting a wage increase for the new Franklin Finance Director and declaring an emergency. This resolution was also assigned to the Finance Committee and we are also asking for time for this resolution. Time is requested for time to be granted. Resolution number 22R68. As amended, a resolution granting wage increases for certain full-time and part-time non-union job classifications and declaring an emergency. This resolution is assigned to the Finance Committee. We move to waive the third reading on resolution 22R68 as amended. Second. We have a first and a second, Kelly. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. We move to adopt resolution 22R68 as amended. Second. We have a first and a second, Kelly. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Cox? No. Motion passes 6 1. And now we come to the favorite part of the meeting our leaders report. Uh, I'm going to enjoy that while it lasts, as long as it continues to be the favorite. Uh, happy to do that. I uh, don't have a whole lot, but some of these are repeats. The leaf drop-off has been uh, well attended, although I'm observing that these leaves fell early this year. Um, so we are currently scheduled to go through that first weekend in December, um, and we'll keep that schedule unless, for some reason, people just quit showing up. But uh, 
I, 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 we really were grant funded on this, so there's really no reason not to. We've advertised it, and so that's the plan. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, we've had over 100 uh, cars on more than one occasion. Wow. Yeah, which is a beautiful thing. Um, so that's going on. Uh, our adopt a Christmas family uh, program is off and running. We've had some generous donations uh, uh, already from uh, from council, from some of our department heads, uh, and uh, we're going to kind of push that out to the general public here um, uh, in a, in a week or so uh, to invite them if they want. If people, you know, there's a lot of ways to help in the community. We all know that, but here's one more, uh, and when we adopt uh, two families from each school district, total of eight families. Uh, and uh, we provide for them as best we can. So uh, that is ongoing, and uh, the information has been forwarded, and we'll post something and, and advertise a little bit more as we go forward. Um, speaking of Christmas, uh, the Tudor House, gosh, before we meet again, the Tudor House Christmas will, uh, event will take place. Uh, that will be on Sunday. I gave the wrong time last time. Uh, it's a Sunday, December 4th, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And all of the singers are lined up from uh, the various schools and uh, some of the churches um some of the uh we got a, a group uh the uh the wind i think they're flutists what do they call them flautists Flautist. 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 i don't think ah, okay uh -huh. and, and so there's an ensemble that comes from the university so they'll be playing again um judge mckinney and and uh, council woman mckinney will be there to uh, entertain us as well um, we'll have uh, goodies, we'll have treats, the house will be decorated, we'll have, you know, walkthroughs to the house, uh, and uh, um, any other surprises that we can come up with. So that's just a lot of really fun events, so we look forward to everybody uh, taking part in that one. Um, two more things, the Parks Commission met last night, and uh, looking at the ongoing projects, uh, we're continuing to uh, uh, discuss some uh, some playground equipment at Grill. There is also, uh, we had specific conversation uh, about the uh, uh, handicap um, playground, handicap accessible playground. And Mr. Koss uh, suggested that to us. We think Grill might be a really good spot to do that. It, it, we're, we're finding initially that it's, it's quite expensive. It'll be well over $100,000. Um, so, but the Parks Commission is, uh, it, it, we're doing some research on that and, and uh, going to try to get some pricing and then uh, go out into the grant fields and, and see what we can come up with there. But the hope is in the meantime, we'll do some additional modest uh, playground equipment up there uh, that the folks over at Grill asked for. Um, the, um, uh, in terms of other projects, uh, there's a, a strong feeling to go forward with a pavilion at Sisler. Uh, that's really the only piece that was in the original plans that hasn't happened yet. And we've envisioned it in a number of different ways. And one time was like the Taj Mahal, uh, which really you wouldn't think it's Taj Mahal. It was just was a pretty good sized pavilion uh, with a concession stand. I think we were going to have a little press box up above. And uh, the numbers came in uh, like $250,000. Uh, so we're looking at something, uh, the, the, the sense from the Parks Commission is we don't need something quite that elaborate. We need a place where people can get out of the sun. Uh, and uh, so we're looking at some of those, uh, and we, we uh, the Parks Commission met over there at Sisler about three meetings ago and walked the grounds, and uh, they have a location where they think it would be most appropriate near the ball fields. Um, long term, there's discussion two or three years down the road to get a permanent restroom somewhere in the more in the centralized area of Sisler Park. Um, so that's, that's on the horizon as well. Um, but the feeling is, uh, well, and two other things. Um, walking trails uh, were suggested. One was a walking trail and grill. Uh, and uh, it's amazing how many, you don't know how many people use one until you put it in. It's, it's surprising the number of people who come out here each day and park and walk this trail. Uh, so that was another thing that was discussed, was sprucing that up a little bit. Um, and you, most days, you, you're going to see cars parked over here. People come and walk their dogs. There's a nice little dog poop uh, bag receptacle out there for people, which people have been good about using. So uh, 
Anyway, that's a technical name. There's for it. Nice I was going to say we can make a note of the bear said. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the technical <laughs> name for it. Anyway, and then also a suggestion that uh, Larry Ray pointed out that on the original plans for Sisler was a walking trail that would circle most of that park, which would really be neat. You know, maybe somebody, maybe the grandkids or the kids want to go play, uh, you know, pickleball or tennis, and grandma, or, you know, or whatever. Maybe grandma and grandpa want to play pickleball, and the kids want to walk. You know, I don't know. So, and that, those are relatively low cost items, so uh, they're looking at those as well. Um, um, so, it, we, we are going to be able to do some things. As you can see from the budget, when you take a hard look, we, we have about our, our estimated resources put us around $390,000. Our budget is about $290,000. We're not in a big hurry to spend the extra hundred, but we do have some funding. But we continue to uh, uh, work on our parks as we're going forward, retiring the uh, uh, in the expense of the tennis courts. Mr. Mayor, if I may real quick, yeah, please. please stay on with the parks. Um, we're talking about the pavilion and think about it, you, you talked about the beginning with the Taj Mahal and everything, and that's just, just too expensive. But I, I would like us, when we're uh, planning the pavilion, to plan it in such a way that maybe it can be built in stages so that we're, we're, we don't combine, confine ourselves to what's built, but have it set up where you know, maybe we start out with just something to get people out of the sun, but knowing that we can add on here and we can add on here as we go along to to get us to where we want to be. If you're not careful, you're going to end up on the parks commission because <laughs> no, I tell you, I know where they meet and I know no, how to stay away. Here's what you'd be happy to know. <laughs> that exact that was exactly the discussion last night. Uh, and fortunately, we've got some talented people on there who have some experience in building, which you know is not my forte. But at one end of the table, Mark Norris was here, and, and uh, at the other end of the table was Larry Ray. Uh, and they almost simultaneously said when we talked about size, we were looking at a 30 by 60. Is that big enough? Is it not big enough? Uh, and, uh, you know, between the two of them, they said, well, you know, you put that in, you can add on to that. You know, so, uh, you know, we'll, and the location we looked at would provide for that. Because I agree with that, you know, I think there'd come a time that we we want to be able to, you know, get, get something up now. Mm -hmm. Um, because you really need it at the ball fields. If you find around the ball fields, you know, there's, you know, some of these long games, there's double headers sometimes, you know, people are there with young kids and they want to get out of the sun. And uh, anyway, that'd be a nice piece. And another thing that you mentioned with the young kids uh, that's been mentioned to us numerous times is some type of playground facility yeah. there uh, for, for those kids that aren't in the ball games that, you know, can have some type of distraction. Yeah. So, and we, we've got some photos from different places, so we're, that's the intention. But they, they're, they're working hard. Yeah, we well, got I know they are. I know they, they did a great job. Yeah, that was a question that just came to me. Um, when they tear down Nolly, um, I wonder if there's an opportunity in some of that used playground equipment. Um, no, it's school funding is totally different, so they may they may have the funding to put a playground in, and they may have some requirements yeah. that the old equipment isn't. I know, I know, I know they have those issues where there's requirements, and they can't use the right. equipment. Uh, maybe an opportunity for the city. All right. Yeah, yeah we'll look at that. We've, you know, I've, I've put a bid in already for the lights from the uh, soccer field uh, to see if we can get those over to Sisler. Just make so, sure they're taller, because when those were put in, they're they're just not quite tall. Enough. Is that, okay. Yeah. When yeah. you look at any pictures of your kids, you got the, that light shining. Oh, right, oh right for, for, for soccer. Yeah. yeah, okay. For soccer. Yeah. All right. Well, somebody, yeah. I think they were donated. I think, I think some, you know, that stuff happened. Hey, and by the way, how about that soccer team? Yeah. Wow. Uh, state semifinalists. That is, that's, that's really beautiful. And today we wrote about Norton's football team that uh, uh, they also uh, had a, a first for Norton football in advance into the regionals. So uh, that's a beautiful thing to, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, that we want to commend them as well. All these young athletes and the people who spend time working with those young athletes, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, okay, I have one, one other order of business. We have a truck, uh, which um, the value uh, is estimated at $7,000, and since it exceeds $1,000, we would need a motion from council to permit us to proceed to auction on this. Uh, we did this recently with the fire truck. It turned out really well. Kiko doesn't charge much, and, and they were uh, willing to do that. I would suggest it to the service department if they had anything, might want to follow the same course. Um, the, the service department has a 1997, gosh, I don't know if you want to write all this down, 
International 4700 um, dump truck. Now there's some VIN numbers and what model SA475. So a 1997 International 4700 model SA475 dump truck. Uh, it's a 1997. Uh, Brian advises that this truck is no longer used even as a backup truck. The salt spreader doesn't work, the plow doesn't work. Uh, it has no value for the department. Um, They're going to uh, suggest a minimum bid of, or put a minimum bid of $2,500 on it. It has 70,000 miles and the hour meter is at 7,543 7, hours. I don't know how that translates, but the sense is that, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's okay. So I would ask for a motion to permit the auction of, uh, of that particular dump truck. So moved. Second. I think we gotta make, I don't think he can make the motion. No, he's gotta make the motion. No, Judy, hey. Yeah. She waited. She, she agreed. Agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She agreed with what he said. Are you okay with that, Jay? Do you want me to say it out? No, that's fine. Okay. I know. So move work when we make the motion, but I'm not sure if. Okay. Yeah. Mayor. Yes, move it to second. Jay. Yeah. Second. Okay. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Target? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. And that is all I have. Jeff, do you have anything for the comprehensive plan committee? I do. I don't know how good our camera will get this, but there's a bright yellow document that's going to be heading to your mailbox over the course of the next couple weeks. Um, it's uh, in printing now, and this is going to contain the survey that um, our brilliant marketing person, Katie Smith, um, worked on the color scheme. Uh, she did a good job of making sure this color scheme wouldn't cost the city more, um, but she she tied it all together. So there's going to be a, kind of an all-encompassing ad campaign with some signs and stuff like that. Then there's also going to be the follow-up postcard uh, that's going to follow this yellow theme. So we're really hoping this yellow theme will prevent it from becoming yellow trash, um, that people will open it and look at it and read it and mail it back, or uh, there'll be a, a code that you can scan and then a I think a six digit number that you can put in so that you uh, register your survey as being unique. Um, it is an anonymous survey, so there is no connection to your address when, when you mail it in, unless you put a return address on it, which we wouldn't, we wouldn't look at anyway, because we don't, the, the goal is not to find out what individual people think, it's to really get a, a grasp on the community. Uh, one important thing, Thing that I think is really important on the survey is that it asks what ward you live in. It also gives some maps so you can understand uh, the way the city's laid out in case you're confused about what ward you're in. Um, we really, really are working hard to get the, the get some real feedback from the city. Uh, and my hope is that down the road we can maybe more electronic uh, in the future. Uh, we can do more small surveys with uh, targeted ideas as to, you know, things that, that the mayor and council may, ideas we may have that, that uh, maybe it'd be good to find out what everybody else thinks before we, we move forward on some things. So, um, right now, that is all I have. Um, the, the meetings have, have really slowed down um, as we got through this survey process, but hopefully next year they're gonna pick back up and we'll get that whole steering committee back. I think we had eight people on the, the last Zoom call. So it just seems to be dwindling and getting smaller. Um, there were more than eight people on it, but there were, you know, it's the 80 20 thing. They seem to have a core people that are at everything. Um, and since Dragon, I did not, I, I wanted to, I didn't have time, I wanted to call all of the members at the last, before the last meeting to try to encourage more participation. I didn't get to it, so hopefully, hopefully I or some other members of the steering committee can, can do that and rally the troops because to be an effective committee, we, we really need the whole committee. We need as many of those members as we possibly can. I, I think it's, I think it's critically important, so. Jack, why don't you ask uh, the council? If we would be willing to take the list and call, would hey, you that'd be great. I'm sure I would love to, and I know these gentlemen would too. That, that would be great. It doesn't take that long. It's just, it's just 
getting your phone out, and, and some people have jobs that don't allow you. Just usually, <laughs> and then we're gonna call. So, sometimes my job allows me to do that stuff with no problem at all. Sometimes uh, and things go crazy and I, and I can't get to it. So sometimes you're a dabber. I know. I am. That's a fact. That's a fact. This might be a good example of that right now. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. But this is excellent. I can see the colors from here. It's yeah. darling. Or Katie is pretty special. Katie, Katie really is. She is a great. Uh, her title is communications director, right? Yes. That's a brilliant title because it fits her perfectly. Uh, it, it really does. She she does a good job of communicating ideas simply without being gabby like me. Uh, so, uh, she knows what she's doing. You're just friendly, Jack. Yeah. yeah. You're just friendly. You've got the poor choice of words. But that, is, that really is nice, and I'm glad that she did that. Yeah. So, a question, I guess, Jack, that so you say next year you want to gear up. Like, how many is on the steering committee total? 20. How many were picked originally? 22. 22. Yeah. Yeah. And moving forward, if there's going to be 8, 10, is, should we ask some of these people you just don't want to be involved anymore? Because if it was originally supposed to be a 22 person steering committee, do we have to look back? And, do we have to go look at some of these people that did not get the opportunity to get on it? Because I think going from a twenty-two to eight or ten, and then that's all. I think it needs to be readdressed. If they just say, "I'm," you know, "I was okay. I thought like I was into it. Now I'm just not." So I think at some point, do we address appointing more people to it? Because now it don't seem like to go from twenty-two to just now we just got eight that want to stick around. I think you need. You know, if we wanted to have 22, we should keep 22. Mr. Daniel, I thought the numbers, I, I was out of town, I wasn't able to zoom on that. But I asked after the fact, and I, I was told there was 14, 15. Numbers. I think the 14 included all the Pogemeyer. Oh, I, I, okay, I heard different. It, we'll find out. Yeah, I don't know. They told me it was like 18, but a bunch of Pogemeyer people <laughs> there was, but in any event, it wasn't 22. It, it certainly wasn't, a, it, it wasn't enough. And, right, and, gotcha. and that was the first meeting for a long time, right. and that was why I, I really want to get out and, and make those, you know, calls. I sent a reminder to everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, so as far as that number goes, I, I think we need to see what we get for the next meeting. That makes um, sense. You know, hopefully that turns around because the selection committee took a long time to figure out who they wanted on it. Uh, they, had, they had purpose in who they picked. It's a good cross-section of the community done on purpose, so it'd be nice if we could just get a rally and, and get them back on track. Um, and, I, and I hope Pogemeyer takes a little leadership in that as well in, in actually encouraging some more involvement because they, they seem to just let it go stagnant until somebody votes. Them. Once you know that what that next date is, then I think we can you know, get aggressive and, and do a reach out individually to each one of the members and say, listen, here's the next meeting. Are you going to be here or aren't you? Yeah, I'm interested. I think Dave had a good idea. Because yeah. if they aren't interested, we should know it. You can well, that's a good point. I don't know that anybody's actually asked that. Um, I do know there are. Yeah, you just done or right? I do. I do know there are some um, that that. But I, I think it's a yeah. small group. I think. I think. Uh, well, whatever it is, I think if it's, this was around yeah. twenty-two, if there's mm -hmm. four or five people that don't want to do it anymore, I think they need. Sure. Well, well, one of the possible is uh, steering committee was putting this together. Uh, we went with 22, and we felt that was a high number to begin with, with the expectation that there would be some drop offs. Dropping down to eight, obviously, is, is uh, more than they say expected. <laughs> yeah. But we, we, I think we expect it to be around 16, uh, 15 to 16 would be our core group of people. So that's, that's the number that. Uh, if we get below that, that's where I think we should start thinking about it. Yeah, the, uh, one, one other concern is that I, I, and I, I wish I had all the dates. I should, have, I should have brought all the dates in front of me. There's some workshops planned, but all of the steering committee meetings are all Zoom calls, not in person. Um, and hopefully that doesn't stay that way. Um, I don't quite understand why, the, why that was done. Um, I think we need some, we need some in-person interaction. Different members of the group may communicate in different ways, just like we talked about with the survey. Some people like the paper, some people prefer the online. I think the members of the committee are the same. And the public gets to come when we meet in person, too. So, um, you know. I have the next steering committee listed as uh, January 11th. That sounds right. And we have a workshop then uh, on, the, um, on our uh, Facebook or on our website. Uh, first workshop is January 26th. Is that at the library? At Gather at the Lakes. Gather, yeah. okay. 6 to 8 p.m. Right. And the 11th is a Zoom call, if I remember correctly. I don't, I, I just had that. 
update down the market. Any other questions? No, but um, leave the list to us. We can make it happen. Well, I appreciate that. Um, one, one thing, real quick. Uh, Councilman Powell got me uh, an appointment with the Portage Lakes Kiwanis uh, to talk about this a little bit. And I honestly thought it was going to be five minutes. I figured half the people wouldn't be from New Franklin. And they kept me going. Um, half yeah, they finally, the, the, the president stood up and kind of gave me that body language that was going to be a little too gabby. So, yeah. Uh, and they were very engaged. They asked a ton of questions. Yes. So it was a good, good meeting. And, and we got some very sincere compliments, uh, tipping their hat to New Franklin for taking the time to ask the community's uh, uh, thoughts in this process. One of the comments I thought was, uh, are you guys doing this because you have to or because you want to? What's your answer? Well, it's because yeah. you want to. Right. Yeah, that's good. And they, they were very complimentary to all the people involved with this. I'm a, Well, do you have anything under finance? I do not. Jim? I do not have anything for a finance report. Okay, then let's move on to old business. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. I do not have anything for old business. <laughs> Nothing for old business. New business? The, the only thing I have for new business is, you know, speaking of community service and stuff, uh, Kwan is, they've been doing this forever. They do the Santa's delivery. If you're not aware of what Santa's delivery is, basically you can drop a gift off for your child, grandpa, or whatever that is, if you're in the community, and they will show up at your house with a police escort, full and sledding Santa will call your kid out to give him that gift. It's been a, I mean, 60 some years they've done this. It's a great, uh, it's a great function. I mean, just to be a part of it, it's, it's wonderful. But uh, New Franklin, uh, Fire department is going to be a drop off point. I think it starts December 9th. So, just uh, just a reminder to take advantage of it. You have to, you have to wrap the gift. Too. You do. Yeah. And they, they ask that you keep it shoebox size because there's obviously side you know, constraints with transporting the No bicycles? That's amazing. Yeah, I remember doing it when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And out here when we lived on Edge Drive when we first moved out here in 1969. And then my kids not to grow up, but you know, so. You have pictures, don't you, David? Oh yeah, and oh, then yeah. there was times where I knew who the Santa was, yes. but I didn't know they were going to be there. Then I'm like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so. And I think sometimes when you're in the outlying areas, sometimes they'll have a centralized point that they stop. And I think it used to be up here where the bank was. Hmm. You're on the corner of Stump. Didn't they do that last year? They stop uh, there. We're usually that time of year to move at Christmas Eve. We're out here. I think they do that for people that live so far out. This is such a distance for them to travel. I'm not sure about that, but I think they do. I have one thing real quick, um, and uh, Ms. Wilson brought this topic up, and it, and it kind of makes sense. And somebody had asked, uh, we had a number of residents, um, including me, that were impacted by uh, Hurricane Ian in Fort Myers Beach. Um, and uh, the, the, the council down there, if you, you know, there's a number of people that have, that have vacationed there or whatever, and they followed kind of what's been going on in the media, the local media down there. Uh, one of the things that happened was it was a dire emergency in the middle of a hurricane zone, in a flood zone, and at the, the council meetings after the hurricane, they all s sat there just dumbfounded and in shock. How it hasn't been on Jimmy Kimmel or any of those uh, late night shows, I have no idea. Um, but Somebody asked me recently, what's what's our emergency plan? Um, hurricane's not our issue, but a tornado, you know, back in the early 90s, or mm -hmm. a pretty big tornado went through green. Um, I lived near Newton Falls back in the 80s when Newton Falls got just decimated by, by a hurricane. No, excuse me, a tornado. Um, you know, the concept of having emergency generators or, or inverters, you know, some batteries and some inverters to, to, to do some of the things like like Ms. Wilson brought up, um, but our overall plan, I guess it, I'm, I'm confident that we have plans in place and there are specific people, probably mostly police and fire, that are that engage those plans regularly, but it might not be a bad idea for council to have a bit of a briefing because we're, we're, the, we're the ones that are representing the public uh, as to what that plan is so that when somebody asks, we know some specifics. 
No, that's, and that's, um, well, your timing is good because we're planning that in the early spring. Um, this is a year, every five years, the county has to uh, um, uh, review their, uh, their the, the countywide emergency plan. So um, um, Katie Smith and myself were down at the Southern County Emergency, emergency Management. Tommy Smoot runs that uh, agency uh, and spent about two and a half hours um, on sort of a refresher on, uh, on what the county's plans are and then how they dovetail with, with our individual plans. We've had separate meetings here. We have a separate New Franklin emergency plan and there's individuals designated for point of contact and, and, and for uh, supervisory positions throughout where a control center would be, secondary control centers, um, uh, locations uh, if, um, if, if people need to uh, and needs to uh, be removed from their homes, et cetera, which the Red Cross actually uh, uh, is involved with, with that particular process. So, yes, uh, the plans exist. Um, we stay on top of them, but I think it'd be a good And since this is the, the year, they're coming out to do some meetings. So I can talk to Tommy Smoot and ask him to do a presentation, perhaps here for uh, at one of the council meetings. Uh, that'll be informative, not just for council, but for, uh, uh, for the community as well. That would be huge. Yeah, they called through the years. Years ago, we talked. There were some talks about that in the council, but it has been a while. Yeah, it's good to have people informed. As as we've seen in Fort Myers Beach, you don't know who's going to step up. Right. You don't know who's going to be the people who really step up and are and are able to take. So the more of your community that understands sure. what the plan is, uh, the more assistance you can have. Absolutely. That's all. Good point, Bill. Um, I Oh, no, no, please. Oh, no. You sure? Sure. All right. I want Harry to stand up. I'm going to read your phone number, and I'm going to touch on a couple little things and little things, okay? Because okay. people can donate money and say to help you buy things. And if you're thinking about taking clothing to Goodwill, they can take it to you instead. Am yes. I correct? And I'm going to read your phone number. I won't read you twice, but I'm going to read yours, okay? That's fine. 330 573 Six five. Eight five. Eight five, sorry. Eight five. Six two eight. Yes, five. that is correct. Now I want you to tell again about friends and tents. It's friends and tents. And what what we do is we go in and we just, you know, there's no judgment. We you know, there are people out there that because they want to be out there, there are people out there that because they have, you know. Doesn't matter, we go in and we serve them a hot meal, we get them clothes, what you know, what they Food, clothing, shelf, basic necessities that all of us take for granted every day. We get up, we go to our closet. They don't always have that. And we're talking, I can't stress enough that when we started, my wife and I started doing this in October of 2020, you know, maybe up to a thousand people we would see throughout the city here, you know, that included Ken, more Ken. Now we're seeing 5,000 plus people. Right? And there's us and other organizations out there that also do this. And, you know, that we, we just, you know, we operate solely on donations, clothing, food donations, monetary donations. We have a building now, so that's a big thing for us. Uh, and I can't stress enough because, you know, it's especially right now. If you, when you walk outside your car, any, anybody, anybody watching, or you guys, just think about it. You're going to get in your warm. These people are out there trying to struggle, and it's only going to get worse. And it does get worse. So, like right now, the, the, the blankets, the heavy coats, the monetary donations to get propanes with. Uh, if you have an empty tank, I mean, it's not worth us to. Because we can come and get it, and we always need those tanks because somebody will call and be like, hey, I just got homeless. And another thing that we have going on is a good friend of mine named Josh Fitzgerald. He's a he's renowned uh, photographer. He him and I were writing a book together. And the process is of this, he took a lot of pictures out into the camps. And nobody was a picture was taken of nobody that didn't agree to it. But he came up with a project called the 34th percent. Because he read it, an article one time that said 34% of all homeless people live in uninhabitable conditions. 
and he we now in the building that we have in Barbary right now we have the exhibit set up a uh, little bit of it we're gonna get the whole thing set up and then we're gonna take it around the different community centers different churches uh, you know Kiwanis I'm gonna actually gonna get with the Kiwanis to see if we can set it up there at some point you know and uh, just to bring awareness to this you know we uh, we take it for granted uh, you know I know we all get upset at the guy that you know you see him out there all the time I mean he's the person that you know is out there but you're not seeing the the back side of it I we have a lady that we met who was actually the reason we started doing this <coughs> Becca's husband got cancer. They lost him. He passed. She found herself living in an abandoned house, her house, that they had foreclosed on, and nobody really wanted to buy it. It was on Lair Street over in Akron, but it was theirs. You know, and he worked at Goodyear and retired from Goodyear, got cancer. They lost everything. She now lives in a tent. She still is today because she's fallen in. Now she's fallen into the vicious cycle of now I'm homeless and how do I get out and then you know we won't see her for a while and she's back and you know there, there's I did we came up with this me and my friend Ben the other day we were like you know we're all one bad decision away from this you may not think it you may have a lot of money in the bank you may not whatever we're all one bad decision away from this not necessarily like a bad decision is you know but just you know, a bad investment, a bad, you know, Bitcoin. you know, yeah, there you go, you know, so yeah, so that's, you know, that's why we do this, and as a community, I think we owe it to these people to provide the basics, food, clothing, shelter, not asking, it. nobody's asking for, you know, uh, us to set them up at the Taj Mahal, so to say, but, you know, they just, food, clothing, and shelter. Um, one of my shoes, and I'm going to say to you that it's wonderful that you're doing it in our community. Mm -hmm. I think that's what really touches me more than anything. I, I think for these gentlemen too, because you're doing it for us. Yeah, and I'm going to just like to let the council know, and, and, and Paul, I did, there's no uh, representative of the police department here. If, if you see somebody in our community that you think they need help, reach out to us and we can reach out to them. Some people don't, they don't want to do the shame of, of homelessness or, you know, I, we met a family just the other, you know, last week. That everybody thought they were fine. Here they're living in their house and it's basically abandoned. You know, and what, the, what the homeless people call abandoned houses, they're abandoned. And they've been living in there for almost a year now uh, because of the, the, the shame associated with something like that. So, you know, we've done this enough that we can go in and talk with these people and, and, and help them, and, you know, and try to get them the resources that they need and get them in contact with other agencies. CSS, the United Way, the United Way has a good program where they do uh, vouchers for people to get help. First class security deposit. And you know, they, it's, it, it's a bit of a process that some of them have trouble navigating through it and we have other agencies that we partner with that can help do that. And like my wife and I, we're down here, we're, up, we're the boots on the you know, we're in the battlefield, you know, just keeping people going. Because I, you know, there's nothing worse than hear about somebody froze to death. You know, I don't know, that just, I think that would be like grounding to me. I just couldn't imagine it. So that's why we do what we do, and we ask for the help that we ask for. And I thank you again, Judy. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, sir. And just, I know we're New Franklin, we don't think we have homeless people there, but we do. Yeah. And just on, I mean, within the last few months, there's a guy living on 619, <laughs> just west of Manchester Road, living in a tent. Yeah. And we've had people living in the state park. I mean, this this hits our community as well. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I don't think people know. You know, they, yeah. or they, a lot of times we put blinders on. You know, we pass that guy yeah, all the time. And you're like, oh, I see him yesterday, the same spot he was out here. You know, and you get, then you start asking yourself, why don't you know? He's not like the the, the gentleman on Manchester Road where he has all his stuff up. You know, there's a gentleman, like you said, I know the gentleman that you're talking about over there. He, you know, he's living back in the woods. He's got no choice. And there are 
you know, I don't want to OD an art in it. <laughs> but there are some people that venture into the state park and sleep at them. And then they gather up their stuff in the morning and they, they leave. And that's the nomadic life that a lot of these people have to leave. That's why we say you know, we need clothes. Because they're going to wear the clothes till they can't wear them anymore. Then they're going to seek new ones. Because they can't carry that stuff around. So, thank you. Does anybody else have anything? Does anybody in the audience have anything they'd like to comment on? Mm. And Paul? Uh, yes, sir. In regards to the pavilion, have we deferred to um, or deferred with uh, Metro Parks? Because obviously they put a bunch of those pavilions on those parks. They probably know how to do it. We did. We got some planning from them. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, the model cool. we're looking at. Okay. Came from reference to that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And Paul, do we have a need for an executive session? Yeah, we would like. To, I, we need an executive session to consider compensation of a public employee. Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Fetterman? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Motion passes 7 